Nestling in the beautiful Derbyshire countryside, the International Gilbert and Sullivan Festival is the world's biggest celebration of GNS, attracting around 20,000 devotees during its three week summer run in the town of Buxton. The festival was founded in 1994 by Ian Smith and his son Neil. It was originally started as a continuation, in spirit at least, of the famous Doily Cart Opera Company, a professional light opera company that staged performances of Gilbert and Sullivan's Savoy operas from the 1870s until it closed in 1982. Over the years, Buxton has established a reputation for being one of the friendliest musical festivals, with people returning year after year to soak up its special atmosphere. I came down here in 1992 with the late John Reed, who, of course, was the the most famous of all the patter men of the doily cart and, and we went into the opera house and, and John said that although he'd performed in some of the largest theatres in the English speaking world, in his opinion the Buxton Opera House was the most perfect setting for Gilbert and Sullivan. It's, it's a beautiful intimate theatre and it's close and, and whether you're up in the upper circle or you're on the front row of the stalls, you feel very much that you're part and parcel of the action. Sky Art spent a frantic and packed day with the organisers as well as an amateur GNS opera group from Plymouth to see what makes the festival quite so unique. The day began with a prompt nine o'clock start and the prop and scenery get in for the Plymouth Gilbert and Sullivan Fellowship's evening performance of Ruddy Gore. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. What the holy hell is going on? Ah. <laughs> right down stage, right in the corner against the wall. Is this going in or going out? <laughs> Nine o'clock, the doors open, the amateur group have to get their sets in, they have to get their costumes in. Within an hour, Plymouth have got the set in and it's virtually uh, prepared. Now they're going to do the lighting. Uh, by lunchtime, they should have done all the technical work. Uh, and then between two and five, they will have a band call uh, and a dress rehearsal. Um, 7.30 curtain up, down round about 10, adjudication, and then they have to be out by 11. The Plymouth Fellowship is one of 14 competing amateur groups who will be judged immediately after their performance by the official adjudicator. Alan Spencer is their highly acclaimed director who performed extensively for the Welsh National Opera as well as the Doily Cart Opera Company. He has four hours to get tonight's performance rehearsed and ready for the stage. So we're doing a dress rehearsal, a tech, all at the same time. And the cast are on a different set than they performed it last time, so they'll have to find a new space we have five new cast members. Uh, I had Ireland be with the professionals <laughs> open on Saturday night. I've been rehearsing Mikado this morning. I've now got Ruddy Gorge to do, and then I go back to a rehearsal tonight with uh, Mikado. So it is very manic, very stressful. Yeah. Upstairs. Well, that's actually <laughs> what already got now. Right. Cowl up or down? Down. Down. You've got the skull cap? Down. Meanwhile, Ian and Neil are joined by Ian's wife, Janet, another director, for a meeting with North American festival directors Rich and Marie Wiley to discuss the Gettysburg leg of the festival. What we want to be doing now, um, if, if, we're, if we're going back, is pushing the standards in the same way that we did over in Buxton. Yes. You know? What we're hoping is that we're going to see more and more North Americans coming to Buxton. <coughs> and, and so we're getting this uh, mm. special relationship yes. Yes. I think everybody talks about. Mm -hmm. We'll really be showing it with Gilbert and Sullivan. Are we going to do it again next year? Uh, I vote yay. Yay. Yeah? <laughs> Unanimous. We're, we're back in Gettysburg. I think that's great. It's all right to stay. It's two o'clock and the Plymouth group are now able to make their way onto stage for the first time to begin rehearsals for that evening's performance. We've got a door sticking on this side. Whilst the Ruddigore male chorus and leads go through their paces, okay. we crossed over the road to another production Alan will be looking after as the professional GNS Opera Company rehearse in the church hall. If you must know who we are, we are gentlemen of Japan. Well, of course, the festival is a mixture of both amateur and professional performing companies. And here we are in a church hall just outside the Opera House, where our very own Gilbert and Sullivan Opera Company are in the early stages of rehearsing their Mikado. We, we started the Opera Company in the mid-1990s, uh, and it's been going pretty strongly in books and ever since. And we, we've always tried to pull out the very best performers, principals and chorus alike from anywhere in the UK and, and we'd like to think that we're putting on probably the best GNS anywhere in the world. It's now five o'clock and the stage of the Buxton Opera House is in full Radigal rehearsal mode. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're cutting all dialogue going into musical numbers, all right? Because we have the orchestra half pass. So get ready for the entrance here. <laughs> Link up, spread out. That's it, that's where we have to get to. With time running out and no orchestra to rehearse with, the group are forced to rush through the final dialogue rehearsals. I'm poor Mad Margaret, crazy pig, poor pig! It has been difficult with the quick turnaround. Um, we've, I guess doing this kind of thing, you're used to doing it, particularly if it's an amateur company, you don't get the sort of length of time that you might get in a professional company, and you're going into the theatre and having one day's rehearsal or something like that, so it is quick. But obviously today was exceptionally quick, because obviously nobody knows the theatre, and we've got to dress at the same time as have the tech, so nobody really knew where they were coming on or when, and the orchestra was on a time call, so we had to finish before we finished what we were doing. So it has been quick. Fun, but we'll try again tonight and do it properly. Well done, everybody. That's what Buxton's about. <laughs> All right. It's not perfect, but I mean, it's first time in the space, it's first time in the theatre, it's first time with the orchestra. So everyone's, you know, just, it's a big learning process. And it's a very scary process to get the whole thing up there in three and a half, four hours. So I'll, I'll give them every confidence I can. Adjudicating all of the 14 amateur groups is David Turner. Basically, you look at the entertainment value. It has to be that. You'll always get diehards who want it done exactly as it was done in 1885, which of course, in one degree, is fine. But uh, to make it really appeal to young people today, it's nice to give it a new slant. Our adjudication is intended to be educational. It's, it's intended to help uh, the amateurs to, to improve. And, 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 you know, he, he does a jolly good job. The time for last minute revisions is pretty much over. The audience, who have come from as far afield as Australia, South Africa and the US, are gathering. It's so fine a wedding of words and music. And it's a little quirky. I mean, I find that people who really love Gilbert and Sullivan have a certain extra something special in their personality. I like to say it's like a Star Trek festival except everybody likes Gilbert and Sullivan. Instead we all dress up in costume and we all talk in quotes and it's a huge geek fest. I just love coming up here. The atmosphere is absolutely great of course and I mean more power to, to, to the people who are organising it. Fair is rose as bright May day, soft is rose as warm as white, sweet is rose as new born day, rose is queen of maiden sky. You can get to know so much about it and it's this sort of self-contained magical world. People think that Gilbert and Sullivan is just the bouncy tunes, and it very much is not. Uh, this evening they're doing Ruddigore, and I've I had the opportunity to play Mad Margaret on this stage, and it's gut wrenching, heart wrenching. Her scene, you can play that just like the most tragic scene in opera. It's 10.30 and the performance is over. The curtain has come down and the adjudicator has decreed that the Plymouth production of Radigor is a triumph. Just how much of a triumph it is, we'll have to wait and see until the end of the festival when the other 13 competing companies have had their chance to shine. We've said for 17 years, we've had, if you like, a little slogan. It's fun, it's friendly, and it's for all the family. It's the parents who loved it in the 50s, 60s with the Doyle Arts who've passed that down to their children, their families, and, and they're coming and they're bringing the families with them and we're absolutely delighted. To find out more about the festival and who won, go to sky.com slash arts. <laughs>